conceptual people talk about it Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse. Uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you. Hey everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a blessed weekend. As for me, it's been a busy one, but on a good note, so I'm happy about that. Um, you saw uh, the announcement before uh, I came on, so you know uh, what needs to be done. We definitely need your support, so I'm gonna leave that at that. Look, there seems to be a little confusion about a couple of things I said in the video I did yesterday about uh, Derek Jackson and Denia Jackson getting a divorce. And, it was along the lines of me when I mentioned uh, he and Kevin Samuels taking two opposite ends of the spectrum uh, to build their audience. Uh, one stroking women, the other one uh, antagonizing them, to use an easy term. Um, and that's what they built their platform on. One was the voice for disgruntled men. One was the voice for desperate women. Um, and I use the term accountability and a lot of people assume that my point was uh, aimed at the accountability of Derek and Kevin Samuels. Um, and while definitely anybody who is having a platform and speaking to the, the masses uh, with the ability to influence has a level of accountability. Absolutely. Both people had accountability and, you know, uh, I, without too much fanfare, gave my opinion on both. Uh, Kevin, while he was alive, I really haven't touched on a lot of Kevin since he passed because he's not here to defend himself and it's easy to go after somebody like that. You know, I've seen them do Dr. Wilson like that um, and I've seen a lot of people done like that. Um, I made it clear I didn't agree with what Kevin was doing, how he was doing it, but that Kevin made a lot of valid points. That, And that's the thing that we have to understand. This is a little digression. This thing we have to understand. We can never uh, become so disgruntled with the messenger that we miss or lose sight of the message. That was some very uh, accurate assessments that Kevin had. And a lot of people miss him because of his delivery and some of the stuff that I believe he said that was completely, totally off. Uh, you know, Candace Owens is another person. Some of the dumb stuff that Can Candace says that just doesn't register with us who live this life and have lived this life uh, in the vein and it makes us not trust us because we see how intelligent she is and we're like how can't you see this and we know that it's her positioning with her political affiliation and what she's trying to accomplish and it also has something to do with her audience and our target base 
but she has been consistent in holding to what she does and she takes them off too um defending Kanye West not Kanye West defending Kyrie Irving uh, you know and and uh when when he was being accused of anti-semitism but where she is exactly on and nobody probably pays attention to her is in the state of the black family and in the state of the black man and how he's been handled and you know the fact that we, 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 we are lacking in an area and it's not simply because the black man is lacking it's because everything is aimed at a different point there's no demand to make us better and she's she's absolutely right on that but you'll lose it so all of that is what I wasn't talking about though what I was talking about is neither one of their approaches in my opinion as a psychologist which my my responsibility is to help people perform better in life and to get them to be their best and their most healthy healthiest self is self accountability for the people who are listening when you sit up Derek Jackson and sit up and say you know don't let that man do this 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 and that your audience is full of women who have consistently allowed that to happen well at first to allow a man to mishandle you because there's a man me being one and I say a man I mean there are many men there are, there's a type of man that no matter what you allow him to do he's not going to mishandle you he's going to treat you the way he treats you based on his character based on his values based on how he was raised and no matter what you do he's never going to lure himself to meet you in a place that you probably shouldn't be at now that's that type of man now you got the other type of man that if you if he can get away with it he's gonna get away with it why because that is who he is that's the environment he's raised in he's hustling he's a pimp he's a player you know it's a dog eat dog world you know she should know better all of those things that he learned growing up made him a predator and he doesn't see anything wrong with being a predator he sees that as a part of the game of life you go out you do what you want you get what you want you say what you want to get what you want deliver on it if you want to don't whatever he has never heard that your word is bond that your your word is the only thing you have at certain points in your life and you don't want to mess it up your reputation is so important he he, he hasn't done that so it's it's about doing whatever so for the women that Derek had to tell that to there's no accountability all you see is what the man is doing to you the accountability comes when you have to sit up and ask yourself why am I constantly in this position why do I constantly attract a certain type of person why am i willing to accept so much for from them before i start to feel some kind of way why is it that i feel like i have to accept it in order to have companionship in order to experience what i think is love but what truly has nothing to do with love at all and so on that side and then when it comes to uh kevin the accountability for us as black men, because he was addressing us primarily, um, is there was no accountability outside of, now don't get me wrong, Kevin had more accountability to his uh, followers than we'll know because nobody shared the stuff where he was checking black men where he was telling us some of the things that we could do and why we can't expect certain things from women if we're doing certain things. He did it. Nobody posted it because it wasn't the message that they wanted. I get it all the time on, on my channel. Obviously, I don't have the following that either one of those have because I don't bend truth. I'm not trying to please any particular side of the population. I'm trying to tell you what we need. I'm going to be honest with you. So I'm pissing 
everybody off at some point because I'm telling you, you're lacking. I'm telling you, you're not doing it right. I'm telling you, we got to do better. I'm calling sisters out. I'm calling brothers out. I'm calling families out. I'm calling marriages out. I'm calling everybody out, including myself, because that's what's necessary. So I'm, I'm never going to have, I'll get things where I'll, I'll, have, I'll post a video. And it's something that one group is really excited about and it makes them feel good. And I'll watch my subscribership shoot up 20, 30. And I'll come back and I'll post the balance. And I'll watch the subscribership go back down. It happens and it's consistently. And the thing is what people don't realize when you're on these social media platforms, you're telling uh, the people you engage and anybody observing so social media and the ability to collect data a lot about yourself you don't realize first and foremost I love YouTube because YouTube and Facebook for that matter Facebook does it more blatantly and open you just look and you know nine times out of ten this is a picture of the person you know they're male or female you don't necessarily know that with all of the you know different avatars that you can have on YouTube most people don't have that picture so you don't know if they're male or female some some of the names are obvious sometimes not but my analytics tells me how many male followers I have how many female followers I have it gives me the age group of the followers I have so when I gain a certain amount of subscribers I can look at the analytics and see okay when did they come in they were male and female between this age, what video drew them? So now I know when I wanna reach that audience, what type of content I need to do. But it also tells me, dudes get ticked off at me and unsubscribe more than women, trips me the fuck out. I got people I know that don't really feel me on Facebook. I got, you gotta really do something directly fucked up for me to waste my time blocking you uh, going back and disconnecting from you if it's just hey man that dude probably ain't feeling me hey that's life but you know now if you get on and you think okay hey this dude is this and then you feel like okay this dude ain't that but just going because this dude said something to piss me off i mean it, it blows my mind but it is what it is but where kevin i think should have held black men accountable again is in the area of complaint complaint complaining at any level whether it's, it's as an individual as a collective as a race when you're protesting that's a complaint that's all the complaining is a sign of helplessness nobody ever complains about something they can control well in a world where everybody wants to declare themselves as alphas alpha solve problems alpha alphas figure a way out Alphas don't go around pointing fingers. It's her fault. So if, if if I'm the leader, if I'm the king, if it's my dominion, if I'm the head, whatever you want to use to sit up and say that we have this certain position that women have to respect, there are responsibilities that come with that respect. And in most instances, not all, because there are some women that are, you know, just really beyond immediate reversal but in most instances when you operate in that space when you create that type of space when you sit up and say i don't care what they do now granted there are women especially in this time that without even knowing it are emasculating men but you can't allow yourself to be emasculated you can't go well they doing this and they doing that no i don't it's just like with me it's like that with white supremacy I don't waste a whole lot of time saying, look what you're doing to me. I'm saying, okay, that's what you're doing. Let me figure this out. This is how I'm going to get around it. This is what I'm going to do. You're not going to stop me. You're not going to reduce me in my manhood. You're not going to reduce me in my responsibility. You're not going to reduce me in my impact. I'm that dude. So you're not going to do that. And that's what an alpha is. An alpha isn't the bossy, loud person, always barking, always yelling, always the one that's always got the uh, finger to point the blame. The alpha is the one that everybody trusts to handle business because they are not going to sit around wasting their time. There's a level of accountability with alphas. And what we have to also understand is not everybody's an alpha. And it does, if you're not an alpha, it doesn't mean you're a bad man. It means that you're not in that role. But even as a beta male, 
you still have to carry yourself in a way where you are taking things. See, what we what we lose is we got so caught up in alpha betas and 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 and, 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 and gammas and it's a bunch of other you know types, but you we got so caught up in it that we lost the sight of the purest thing about us. Not whether we're alpha or beta, but that we're men, 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 men. Not every any place where you look where there is a collective social grouping with regardless of the species you don't got everyone in the group is not an alpha a wolf pack has one alpha you don't want to mess with none of those wolves being an alpha simply states the operational position you are in the totality of things now you don't necessarily want somebody that's metrosexual beta to me i told him that was going to be a problem with that i'm all down for keeping yourself clean uh neat manicured you don't need snagging nails cutting woman when you're touching all that but i think that's ha that has to be a place where your manliness presents itself immediately when you walk in the room um we grow hair on our face for a reason it's a natural thing and we have to understand that we have to understand that. So when I talked about accountability, I was talking about, hey, we need to stop women from think all they see is the man is the problem and ask themselves why they keep attracting the same type of man. Because that's a level, ladies, that you can raise yourself to that you will literally repel with your energy with your expectations, those type of men. And you will only be in an environment, a romantic environment, with men who are willing to stand up to the level that your natural uh, presence demands. That's working on you. That's not sitting up saying, he did this, he did this, he did this, he did this. He's responsible for what he did. Every last one of them he's. But you have to ask yourself, who's the one common denominator in all of those relationships? Unless all those guys got together 20 years ago and said, hey, we're going to take turns screwing the hell out of her, just mess her whole life up. Then there's a commonality in your behavior that's the common denominator that's producing the type of relationships. You need to figure that out. You need to get with someone. You need to work with someone. You need to find out what's going on. You're probably going to trace it back to your childhood and you need to work on it. You need to heal. You need to fix it. You need to grow. You need to develop an understanding of who you are. Men, women will just like any other person when they can't have what they feel they need or want and deserve are going to act out. We live in a society that equips black women to handle black men. They've got all of these different things that set them up to see us in a negative light. Despite all of, you know, there's no good black men. Black men are trash. When you actually look at it, black men spend more time in their children's lives than any of the scientific proof that black men are actually more active in their children's lives than white men. Asian men or Mexican men. Now, when you find a deadbeat, he's a motherfucking deadbeat. But the average black dude is trying to put in work. But that's not who you're being shown. And that's not who you're attracting, ladies. But, men, we've got to stand up and stop looking at what they're doing and start being who we want to be. And we got to ask ourselves the same question. If I keep getting loud mouth women who all they want to do is argue, bark, and, and have conflict and, 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 and keep drama going, what is it about me that's attracting them? If you, whatever type of thing that you got this idea that that's all women are like that, it tells me you're not exposed to all women, first of all, black women, first of all. And it tells me that there's something in you that is consistent enough that it puts you in that vein. You got to work on that because I guarantee you there's some women out there that want to love on a black man wholeheartedly. There's some women out there that want to give. Now that's some burnt women that don't want Jack to do with black men. That's some that's so burnt they don't want Jack to do with nobody. 
And that's from experience. It's not like they just were born that way. Now, one more thing, ladies. And, I, and one more thing, men. Ladies, stop passing your hate for black men onto your children. You got black boys don't want to be black men because of how they mama feel about black men. And you got black girls saying they don't want a black man because of how they mama. Stop passing that hatred on. Heal. Because it's the healing that you need that's going to expose you to the fact that all black men are bad. Black men, stop training your boys that bedding women is a form of manhood. They are just as damaged by these casual sexual encounters as the women. Psychologically setting them up for all types of failure in the future. We have to do better. Now, nobody's going to like this. I'm going to lose a bunch of subscribers, and I really don't care. It's the truth. And I'm going to spend a lot more time on this, talking about it and how it works on a scientific level. Uh, I'm going to try to use as much lay conversations as I can, but we need to look at what's going on with us. And I'm going to use my book, Born in Captivity. If you haven't gotten that book, you need to get it. Uh, the link is in the description box. You need to get Born in Captivity. It explains a lot of what we're dealing with right now. And a lot of people are reading that book. And instead of figuring out how to help people, they're using it to exploit people. It's crazy because that's what people are doing. They're finding your weaknesses. And then they're capitalizing. That's all that happens when somebody gets up and they want to stroke you. They don't hold you accountable, but they're stroking your ego. They're building their fan base. And they're getting paid because you're a fan. You Because you're a follower. And they're not giving you any real thing. I want to give you something. And it means that I don't get anything close to what, you know, I could if I want to play that game. You know, if I want to pick a side and just go hard on the other side, I know how to talk. I got the gift for gap. I could do it. I could, you know, my thing is I'm about love. I love black men. I love black women. I love black children. Uh, I love our black elders, our ancestors. I want to see healing in my community. So uh, that comes at a price to me. You know, I have to pay to serve the community because the community doesn't support it. And you'll get that eventually. But on that note, I'm going to get out and get my ass in the gym. I'm running behind. I done gave y'all 21 minutes. All right. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys uh, go to the description box, give, and get born in captivity. All right.